If you're stranded on a boat in the middle of the ocean with no fresh water, don't drink the ocean water. And secondly, if you inject somebody with pure water, they will die within minutes to an hour. Those are two incredibly weird facts, but they both have to do with the importance of osmosis, which is the diffusion of water from high to low water potential, but I hate that definition. And your teachers will probably force you to memorize it, but what I want you to remember is that water follows solute. And if you can remember this, this whole process will be very simple for you. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're talking about osmosis and tonicity. So first, what is osmosis? Well, it's water just following solute. So you know that your body is made of mostly water and your body is consists of 30 trillion cells that will have a pocket of water inside of themselves as well as an environment of water outside of themselves. Now that being said, it's not just water that's inside of these cells and outside. We also have things called solute, which is just things dissolved in the water. This can include things like salt and glucose and amino acids, other things you may have heard of before, and they are going to be packed inside of the watery environment of your cells as well as outside. And what you need to know is osmosis is when water is following those dissolved things. So let's just start with an example right off the bat. We've got a cell here with a good amount of water in it, but we've got some solutes here, solute one and number two. And if we were to measure the concentration of how much solute is in that water, we would come up with a value that's around 290 milliosmoles. Now don't get scared by the milliosmol thing. That's just basically saying how much solute is dissolved in the water. So let's compare it to the outside environment that's bathing this cell. So I'm gonna draw a random extracellular environment, meaning outside the cell, and we're gonna see how the concentration differs. Okay, so in this case, you see a lot more solute and very little water. Okay, so in this case, the osmolarity of the outside environment we'll say is somewhere like 400 milliosmoles. So the more solute in a small packed area, the higher the milliosmolarity. Where will the water want to go? Well, you know that water likes to follow solute, the dissolved things. And where's there more solute? Obviously outside in the extracellular environment. So we are going to see water wanting to pass into this extracellular environment following the solute. That process, ladies and gentlemen, is called osmosis. So therefore, we can name this extracellular environment a specific name due to its tonicity. Now, tonicity just deals with how much solute is outside of the cell. Keyword is outside, right? So as you can tell with this guy, we have a lot more solute than compared to the inside of the cell. So we call the tonicity of this hyper, meaning very high, tonic, meaning tonicity. So whenever the cell is bathed in a high tonicity environment, what does water do? Obviously, water moves out of the cell. So this is what happens when you drink ocean water. Ocean water is super duper condensed with solutes, so you're bathing your cells in a very high solute environment. The cell loses water, it will shrivel, lose its shape, lose its function, and likely die. So don't drink ocean water, people. Now let's take the second example. So in this case, we're gonna have the same exact solute concentration inside the cell, which fun fact is a homeostatic variable. You can actually learn about homeostasis in this video next. But in this case, I'm gonna draw a different tonicity outside of the cell. All right, so in this case, we see a lot more water and a lot less solute. So this is a very diluted solution, and we'll say the milliosmolarity of this guy is say 100. So a lot less solute. So based on what we've learned the previous example, I bet you money you can guess both the name of the tonicity as well as where water will move. But if I just left you to do it, then I wouldn't be able to finish this video. So I'm gonna do it myself. As you can see, water will want to move towards the higher solute area. So it's going to move this direction. And because there's less solute outside, the tonicity then would be called hype O, meaning low tonic. And since we're having water move into the cells, the cells will begin to swell. And oftentimes they actually burst. 
just like Squidward when he ate way too many Krabby Patties. This is why if you inject somebody with pure water, which actually has an osmolarity of zero, it would have no solute in it, water will move rapidly into the cells, expand, blow them up, and they will likely die. So here's where I like to point out our original definition. What was it? The diffusion, basically meaning passive transport of water from high to low water, right? High to low water. What is happening here? Well, look at the first example. We had a lot of water here, very little water here. So water obviously moved from high water to low water. But in the second example, we had a lot of water on the outside, less water on the inside compared to the solute, so water moved from high to low once again. So the definition originally was correct, but I just like to remember water follows solute because we're talking tonicity, which is the solute concentration outside the cell. So if we know that, we can know where water is gonna go. Now lastly, but not leastly, if that made sense, let's say we have a cell with an environment that looks like this. And as we look back and forth, we can see there's an equal amount of both water and solute, so this would actually be the same osmolarity as inside of the cell. So in this case, water and solutes will still be moving around, but it will be an equal movement in and out of the cell. So there will be no total net movement of water in or out. We call this the same tonicity on both sides, so we call it iso, meaning same, tonic. And again, in this case, there's no net water movement. So if you're gonna become a nurse and you're injecting somebody with a liquid solution, you likely give them a solution that is 290 milliosmoles, usually 0.9% sodium chloride solution, so that there's no net movement in or out of the cell, the cells stay the right shape and stay the right function. But let me throw a wrench in this whole thing. Water, in and of itself cannot pass through this cell membrane that is on the outside of these cells. That's because water is a polar molecule and it can't cross the fatty nonpolar membrane of the cell. So how does water move across the membrane in the first place? Well, you need to watch the cell transport video next.